In this project, I'm trying to find another way to interpret this still life subject, which is painted in the previous project. So here's, here's the painting. And one method of searching for, if you like, the abstract, is to zoom in on parts of what you've done already in the painting and amplify aspects of it. So as I've got a source photograph that I took of the arrangement, Try this. If you print off your own photographs, fold this one into four, you end up with the bottom right corner where we've got the lumps of cheese and the cheese board. And I thought I could use this as a basis for creating a pattern on the um, painting. So here we go. Let's just see if this works. I'm just going to copy those shapes um, into more or less the same place as... Um, they were, but, but perhaps a little bit less um, tidily to create, if you like, the cubes in this to create something more um, more cubist. So this is the grey cheese board. Then we've got the cheese on top of it, and this is where you don't have to be too concerned about the perspective because we're looking at creating patterns here but patterns based upon objects which have a, a, an illusion of solidity so this is the yellow cheese and I'm already sort of distorting it slightly and we've got the sorry the orange cheese um, actually my composition to the right I've got a gap so I'm going to I'm going to do exactly here I'm going to use a gap um, and it creates a sort of set of steps in the cheese Right, so what we've done is we've done like a set of steps. Right, now we can either turn our source photograph upside down or turn our painting upside down. And this is actually a little bit of what happened in the first stages of cubism, which was called analytical cubism as opposed to synthetic cubism, which followed on where things became more stylized. But analytical actually depended upon looking at shapes. So let's repeat this, but I'll change the scale slightly and, and just change the angles a bit. So this is this is the, the grey board over here. This is the... I'm tipping it over a tiny bit. This is the red Leicester. This is the cheddar. So we've now got steps going both ways. Let's take the wine glass. I'm going to integrate it, but perhaps I'm going to... Let's see, let's see what happens. Let's take the shape of the, the basic shape of the wine glass to start with. I'm going to put it in the same place. Let's just, there's no point in making it too complicated. Let's just put it in the same place. I'm tipping it up a tiny bit, and I'm now going to draw the ellipse on top of it. What I'm going to do, though, I think I'm going to overlap it with this shape. So let's just take part of this bit of the cheddar out. I'm doing this in charcoal, by the way, so it shows up. So I'm just going to overlap that shape. I'll leave it um, on top of there, but I'm going to take the stem and then I'm going to let the, bring the stem into here, as if we can see it in one area but not in the other. So it literally is like it's, it's sort of passing inside the cheese. There we are. And although I've tipped the glass over, maybe I'll tip the wine back to the bottom. So the wine is on the level. So we've got a shape there. I'm just wondering what this shape up here. I think actually again here I'm going to open up that ellipse to make it a bit more rounded. So I did this before, but it's one of those things where the more you play with these patterns, maybe I'll make it more rounded and overlap those shapes, the more we can exploit the, the more we play with it, the more we can exploit the possibilities. All right, let's just bring some other shapes in here, and I'm going to now move things around again. We've got um, we've got an end of the knife in the photograph. I've actually found a painting by Juan Gri, a Spanish painter from um, the Cubist movement. He basically that translates as John Gray. You can't remember 
his name. So Yuan Green, before the First World War, was painting in both analytical and then subsequently synthetic cubism, one of the main figures in the movement, alongside Braque and Picasso. And I found one actually called Bottle and Knife. Um, I'll attach it <coughs> so that you can see what I'm referring to. And by coincidence, it has a wine bottle and a knife. Well, there we are. So I'm going to take, what I'm going to take now is the wine bottle and knife and see if I can just move it across this pattern and then create something new. So let's put the wine bottle again in the same sort of place and I'm going to start, so we'll see the wine bottle up here. So this is the sort of shoulder of the wine bottle and the neck goes up higher and I'll let it disappear. So it's sort of going to be half visible there. It's going to disappear here and maybe it's going to reappear down in here, inside the, inside the cheese. Maybe I'll leave it just a little bit of it there, so we lose that part of the wine bottle. But what we can do is we can take the, the label of the wine bottle and put it somewhere else. Let's put it over here. Let's just move it sideways. So we've got the label over there. Do you see what's happening? The whole thing's starting to create a strong set of shapes now. We've got the knife. Well, we can put the knife in here. Let's put the knife in, in, in here. I'm going to enlarge the blade. Let it pass underneath here. Maybe it's going to disappear at that point. Let's turn it around again. And as I say, the cubists actually did this. They often turned their canvases, their painting around, and carried on working on it. So we could add the grapes, we could add a, the handle of the knife maybe coming in here. Let's have the handle up here, so it's going to come in at this angle. Again, slightly larger. So we'll paint it here as if it looks solid, like a three-dimensional shape. So we start to fill the form. The other thing they did is they simplified the palette. So I'm not going to use as many colours as in the other one. I'm going to make it more monochrome, but perhaps some C. Maybe that produces a, a good form. So let's turn it back. Um, let's go back upside down, actually. Or back to the original shapes. Here we go. We've got an upside down glass. We've got an upside down bottle. I can repeat the bottle over here. I can put the bread in, I can put the grapes in. Maybe the grapes will sort of appear. Let's have the grapes appearing up in this area. So we just use these sections as little windows into different different parts of the composition. So grapes in there. Maybe some grapes in another part too. But um, that's to start with. And as I say, I'm going to repeat the bottle. And where are we going to have it? Let's have it showing. You can have it showing inside this box here. And then continuing behind it here. Again, I'm just pitching it up at a slight angle. So that's the... Wind off there and you'll see it going up here and going behind a shot of wine bottle up here. Again, if you're doing this, keep the shapes really simple. And I'll have the neck going right up the top. Let's, let's go back up and take that out so you can see the shapes. What also plays a big role in this are the spaces in between. And what I'm going to do is actually paint these spaces to look like solid forms. Um, going from light to dark. So this is your first drawing video. The next video is going to be the painting.